Well, as promised, here we are with the news review. It's a beautiful Thursday morning, and I'm joined by a surprise guest. You've not seen her uh, on this belt in a while. I am pleased to give all of you Nana Oye. I'll just leave it there. Nana, a very good morning to you. I, I think you'd have to unmute, please. Yeah, you can hear me. I can hear you now. Great. Good morning. How are you? And good morning to all your listeners. Happy well, to be here. Great to have you. Great to have you. I'll, I'll start her from this end because we've not heard from you so much lately. I'll start from what Nanawi has been up to in the last what, year, the last few months. W what can you share with us? What have you been up to? Up, up and about in Accra mm. and beyond. Yes. Uh, doing what exactly? I know I'm pushing you. <laughs> Um, no, not, not pushing, doing some um, legal work, running a law firm, and then also the JEA Mills Memorial Heritage, and also some work at the NDC party um, level. So that's Nanohi, up and about. Okay, let me just ask this final question. Uh, the, the MPP has had its uh, National Delegates Conference. Uh, you are yet to go through that entire enterprise. You, you've already started with some activity there. But when you, when you look at Ghana currently, and uh, they always say the opposition is a government in waiting. When you look at Ghana currently, what picture does it paint for you? A dismal picture, um, quite worrying, quite concerned, uh, frustration, um, dismay, uh, hopelessness, and um, not too good in terms of stability of our country. Uh, people complaining about the high cost um, of living and um, not too good, um, but not, not too good. Uh, difficult uh, financial times, especially uh, people having a problem putting uh, three square meals on their table. So not too good. Is this then, which leads to my next question right before we get into the daily graphic, is this then a situation your party, the NDC, would like to inherit? Because some have said, let me just paint the picture for you. Inflation has hit an all-time high almost in two decades. Since 2003, December, we've not seen inflation rise to this, this level, 31.7% as of July. The CD is still the worst performing currency in Africa. The last I checked, it was about 9.2, 9.4 uh, CDs to the dollar. And, you know, business people are complaining. You look at how much we have to pump of our, uh, you know, currency or how much we have in terms of compensations. Then you consider the fact that we've been having these downgrades. First, S&P downgrading us from B minus to CCC plus with a negative outlook. And now Fitch also downgrading us to what some people call junk status, a CCC. Just yesterday, I was reading about Professor Steve Hank of the Johns Hopkins University, who is also saying that we really need to do something. In fact, he says we should sidestep the central bank and have a currency board to stabilize the city. Is this, or with all of this happening, is this an economy you would want to inherit? Can you do anything about it if you come to power? It is obvious that the new patriotic party have failed Ghanaians. The economic proposals that they made and the economic strategies that they promised Ghanaians would help fix Ghana economy has definitely failed. On the other hand, the NDC has consistently, at every point in time we have come into government, proposed economic recovery and economic programs that have succeeded. The evidence is very clear. We look at the tenure of uh, President John Evans at a mills and what the rates of inflation, the fact that Ghana was the fastest growing economy in the world. The data and the figures are there to show that the NDC is committed to growth, development growth, economic growth, prosperity for the ordinary Ghanaian. The, 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 the evidence is very, very clear. You say the evidence is clear, but uh, guess what? You also took us to the IMF. But we went to the IMF and we were able to bring the economy back on track. That is the difference. You did not the complete MPP, the program. You, you the did not MPP, complete the, the, the IMF program. It is this administration that ended the IMF program. But we were brave enough to go. We were brave enough to implement. 
and we saw the results. The MPP, on the other hand, swore heaven and earth that they would not go to the IMF. They swore heaven and earth that they had the solutions, and this is where we are. And I am also calling for Ken Ofriata to resign. He has failed as a finance what, 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 minister. You say he has failed, but uh, th this is a system. He's not the only person there. He may be the arrowhead, but take, for example, the decision to go to the IMF. That, that, was, that was not his decision. He clearly didn't want that. He felt we were still not on the cusp of uh, you know, disaster and we shouldn't go the way of the IMF. But when his boss, the CEO of the country, President Okofuado says, let's go based on the advice I have, he, he has no choice. Why, why blame him? Let's take a very simple example. And I'll use my favorite bakery in Ajigano, in Adenta. In January, I was buying a loaf of bread at seven Ghana cities. Then it went to 15 Ghana cities. It went to 17, and now I'm having to pay 20 Ghana cities for a loaf of bread. Simple. And so it's obvious that Ken Oforiata has not managed this economy properly. He is the arrowhead. He is the lead. And we need somebody else to take the lead. In fact, if I had my own way, they should all be cleared. The MPP has obviously failed. If you said we had the money, what have you done with the money? And why are Ghanaians struggling to even eat or even buy water to drink? Why are Ghanaians struggling? This is the question. It's very simple. Mm. Just analyze the cost of a loaf of bread. Just analyze the cost of a bowl of kenke and find out whether even people have jobs to be able to get money at the end of the month to um, uh, pay and buy food to put on their table. Mm. Simple. Right. And that will help you determine whether or not MPP economic policies have failed and whether or not Ken Oforiata should still be the finance minister. Mm. Simple. As we get into the daily graphic, I mean, what you're saying also brings to mind uh, the talk about bread and amani and how, you know, inflation has affected them. Uh, bread, how much we're buying it and how, we're, how much we're buying it now. But mind you, just know, remember that the president has said he is not going to reshuffle. That is, is the NDC trying to do propaganda to affect his, his party and that he's not going to pander to the whims and caprices of uh, the NDC. But let's get into the Daily Graphic uh, newspaper. Two funds to aid justice delivery. President, government contribute 2.2 million Ghana cities. I see you wanted to respond there. Maybe let me do the stories in the Daily Graphic and then you can put your response yes. together with these. Uh, and um, access to legal services by the ordinary citizen has received a boost with the launch of two funds to enhance the justice delivery system. The Legal Aid Fund, which will strengthen the financial capacity of the Legal Aid Commission to discharge its duties effectively, and the Law Reform, Reform Fund, which will help the Law Reform Commission undertake development projects and regular law reforms, which will each have one million Ghana cities of seed money. Now, while the Legal Aid Fund was set up under the Legal Aid Commission Act 997, the Law Reform Fund comes under the Law Reform Commission Act 2011. The objective of the Legal Aid Fund is to ensure the financial capacity of the LAC to efficiently and effectively carry out its mandate, while the objective of the Law Reform Fund is to help the LRC undertake projects for the development and reform of laws, develop human resources in law reform, among others. Let's take a quick look at other stories and then you can put all of them together. I know definitely you'll be talking about uh, these funds, the Legal Aid Fund and all of that, especially in the space yeah. you operate. Uh, there's also attempts to discredit me will fail, Colonel Damwa to OSP. Now, this has to do with, um, let me just get to that story on page 16. It has to do with customs and its leadership mired in some tango with the OSP. So the Commissioner of the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Colonel Kwejo Damwa, retired, has accused the Office of the Special Prosecutor of an attempt to discredit him. He explained that the OSP was trying to indict the Deputy Commissioner Operations and myself, quoting him, that's what he said, and myself, or and me, uh, and I, I should say. And um, anyone who has read that report very well will know the basis of that Report is hollow. Luckily for me, God is always on my side, he 
added, I have lived a meaningful life, and if he attempts to destroy me, it won't be easy for him. People have tried it, I have survived, and this one too, I will survive. He said this to rapturous applause by the senior customs officers. But how do you react to this entire situation and uh, Madame Henne of the, the um, um, La Bianca uh, group and how she's a member of the Council of State and how supposedly she has used her position to influence per what the, uh, the, the special prosecutor says, the taxes she should be paying to the state. But this has been the response we've heard from different groupings. Um, you know, uh, like I said, we've heard from the woman herself. We've heard from the customs officers involved. We've heard from, I believe, the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. And we've also heard from uh, the freight uh, traders. It appears... There yes. is some disagreement in terms of whether or not she is wrong. What is your thinking? The facts are very clear. The special prosecutor has given his ruling or judgment or whatever. And if they have a problem with it, they should appeal. And um, I would even ask for a whole, a more comprehensive investigation um, beyond the period of time that the special prosecutor um, investigated. I'm sure there's more to it than meets the eye. Now to Kenel Damwa, um, I'm really, um, it's really sad and regrettable that a public officer holding the high office of commissioner of customs of the Ghana Revenue Authority would give such, um, such comments, would actually, I mean, give such comments and make such comments about such a serious indictment. I mean, very, very talking about the special prosecutor being a small boy and about God and about uh, he's led a meaningful life. What, does, what has that got to do with the finding of fact that there was an issue with the valuation and that um, there was an issue with the valuation and that the lady should have paid more? He should address the finding, that finding, and not throw in red herrings about um, he uh, about um, the special prosecutor being a small boy and all that. He, he should address that, and he should be investigated and also prosecuted, because if this has happened, but but, but he says yeah. no, no, yeah, he says he's done no wrong. He says this is standard well, practice that it's it's been done by those before him. And it's nothing new. He, he says he's done no wrong. And that, in fact, he mentions well, one, one uh, j just to add this uh, to the conversation, so we are all aware, being yeah. fair to both sides. Yeah. He adds that one Akurugu, you know, an officer, uh, the, the, the SP, the special prosecutor, wanted that person to be seconded to him, the office of the special prosecutor, which he refused on numerous occasions. Then eventually that officer, you know, uh, moved out of customs, joined the police force, so to speak, became a COP, and now he has been seconded to the, the office of the special prosecutor. But he feels there is some bad blood, and it's on the back of that bad blood that, you know, Kasia Jabing is hounding him. He feels this is not being fair. What, 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 do, you, what do you make of that? Are, are you just going to neglect that? His argument is very, very untenable. He has provided no evidence to the public and to Ghanaians to show that Kisi Adabing is hounding him. He has provided no evidence. If he refused to second an officer and the officer has now been seconded, what has that got to do? We have all read the report and the findings are there. So he should address and attack those findings. Mm. And for me, my worry is that as commissioner for the customs division, his statements are very regrettable and very worrying. To personalize and actually go to the extent of saying uh, the special prosecutor is a small boy. The guy is, has written a report. And so if you have a, a problem and you think that the findings are not um, as per, um, the findings are not true, then attack the findings and don't be personal. When people make such personal attacks, then you know there's a lot beneath. So I am even asking for the Office of the Special Prosecutor to investigate the commissioner himself and to find out whether or not there are other such valuations. We want 
uh, we want to collect our revenue. And mm. the customs division is a very integral public institution that rakes in revenue for the Republic of Ghana and for the government of Ghana. And so he should be investigated because all these arguments he's making against the report are very untenable, are personal. He should stick to the facts and address the facts and the adverse findings against him. Ghanaians will not accept these um, arguments that he's making because they are not tenable. Right. We want he there. He is there to collect revenue for mm. Ghana. That is not what he's doing. He ought to be investigated. Fair right. A, a quick one on the two funds to aid justice delivery. I know uh, yeah. you, you'd be very uh, excited about that. Uh, is, is this something you'd be willing to commend government for? Yes, it's a step in the right direction that um, there are funds. But access to justice for the poor and the vulnerable in Ghana goes beyond this. There are so many issues. Legal lawyers, um, even the ratio of lawyers in rural areas is a problem. Administration of justice is an issue. In terms of even the courts in um, districts, by now we should have district, uh, every district should have a court. Um, we've expanded, there should be courts in um, other human settlements. So even in terms of infrastructure, in terms of administration of justice, um, we need to see some reforms. It's good that the Law Reform Commission is also being given uh, some funds because we need to have new laws to cover new areas. For instance, uh, the ICT, uh, technology, abuse on social media, and several, several other um, um, laws. Right. And, and, but beyond that, we even need um, legal representation. Um, uh, I know FIDA has uh, paralegals. We need to expand that. And, and there's a lot that has to be done, um, even for filing fees. Poor people cannot even afford to pay filing fees um, in court. There was one lady who had a case custody. She had to pay 600 Ghana cities. She couldn't pay. Somebody had sued another gentleman. He had to pay 150 Ghana cities. He could not pay. So he couldn't get justice. So even beyond this uh, fund, there's a need for, for government uh, and, and for the stakeholders, especially the Ghana Bar Association. I will call them the president of the Ghana Bar Association. You ought to do more to help in justice delivery, especially justice delivery and access to justice for the poor and the vulnerable. This right. is a good step in the right direction, but let's do more. Sure thing. Uh, let's take a quick look at two more stories in the Daily Graphic and we'll wrap it up very briefly. Uh, page 16 uh, says, we must live within our means. Uh, you may have followed that uh, graphic business Stambic Bank breakfast meeting yesterday where the speakers were talking about living within our means. Quoting one of them, the fact that we have been going to the IMF for this number of times tells us that we have not been practicing fiscal discipline and not living within our means. If we get a program, this would be our 18th. And I feel this trickles down as well to each of us in this country and how we can tighten our belts and live within our means. That's the first one I'd have you react to. The second one, just to add it quickly, parties agreed at IPAC to use Ghana card. That's according to the GCPP's citizen, Ato Dazi. He is general secretary of the great consolidated uh, popular party. And he has agreed with the Electoral Commission on the use of the Ghana card for the continuous registration. This, he said, was because it was the best form of identification for a Ghanaian by law and the correct based document for one to get their names on the electoral roll. So those two quick areas. It's interesting because I had a recent interaction with your general secretary, um, Johnson Asiedu Nketia. And he said that, in fact, at IPAC, which your party is not participating in for now, that agreement was not there from what information he has. But uh, citizen Atodazi of the GCPP disagrees. Uh, what is your take first on uh, the, the Ghana card being used as a standard, being used to vote, first of all, and secondly, for continuous registration, those who are going to be added to the voters' roll? The Electoral Commission themselves know that that is a recipe for chaos in Ghana. The Electoral Commission knows the laws and the fact that under the 1992 Constitution, we all have a right to vote once we are 18 years. And if they 
come up with a Ghana card, it will deny us that right to vote. And that is unconstitutional. It is very clear. So it's non-negotiable. Whatever means of verification, they would wish to apply to ascertain whether I'm eligible to vote or not, or whether I'm eligible to contest or not, should be in conformity with the Constitution. And I should not be denied my right to vote simply because the Electoral Commission has selected to um, use a certain means of verification that deny, denies me my right to vote. So um, that would be uh, my comment on that, that I have a right to vote and the Electoral Commission must think through a means of verification for allowing me or for getting me to exercise that right to vote. And the, can, the Ghana card is not um, an appropriate means of verification. Uh, how about living within our means? Any uh, quick, very quick response to that? I mean, I'm, I'm really surprised at um, the, the speaker who made um, that comment. Is that the problem? No, the person was is not it, I mean, referring it's, it's to the personal problem? one. The person was referring to our fiscal challenges. So failing to live within our means as a state in terms of expenditure borrowing and all of that. I only extended it. I extended it to the fact that we all, yeah. it must trickle down. But the issue is not, I would disagree that mm. the issue is living, failing to live within our means. The issue is the corruption. Mm. The issue is the procurement more practices. The issue is the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the using of political patronage. Those are the issues, key corruption. And the issue is wanting, the, wanting to buy a jet when you don't have money. So those are the issues. The president or whoever wanting to procure aircrafts, wanting to procure, um, wanting to build a cathedral when there's no money. So those are the issues and we must face the elephant in the room and as speakers and as leaders, we ought to say it as is. Ghanaians are struggling and trying to live within their means. Government must live within their means and address more practices, address corruption, mm. address political patronage, and address procurement, uh, fraud, and all that. When all that is done, then we'll be able to get the resources to uh, provide uh, for our social um, economic development as a country. So the speakers who are well, um, they are renowned and they know their subject matter must face the elephant in the room and speak truth to power. They right. are not speaking truth to power. They must tell President Nana Kufado that he is doing the wrong thing and he should address corruption, he should address the fis fiscal discipline and also uh, procurement more practices and he should crack the whip and not say he's not going to reshuffle. All right, let's look at some quick stories from the Ghanaian Times and the Daily Guide newspaper. But focusing on the Ghanaian Times, 1,251 vehicle owners land in trouble as DVLA sanctions them for various defects. There's also current economic challenges, blame inconsistencies, lack of proper implementation of government policies uh, for uh, the challenges. That is Dr. Ayim Dake. I'll have you respond to these, but I also want to sneak in this bit uh, very quickly. You've heard undoubtedly of what has happened to a level 100 students at the KNUST, especially as you've been at the uh, Ministry for Gender, Children and Social Protection before. You've heard of that situation at the KNUSD, six uh, people gang raping this poor student. Uh, is there a rape culture of, sh of sorts creeping into our universities and the levels of violence that, that we're seeing? I mean, where is it coming from? What do you see? How do we stem the tide of saying? Yeah, I mean, um, my, my son called me very late and was telling me about the Twitter storm yesterday and, um, you know, and the discussions that were going on um, on Twitter and asked me to join. So I, I was able to um, read. And um, it's, it's been there. It's been with us. It's getting worse due to social media. An increase in the porn, access to porn mm. by even minors. You know, is, is there a cultural element to it? Is there a cultural element to it? 
Yes, there's a cultural element to it. There's an economic element to it in terms of poverty, and there's a social element to it in terms of exposure exposure to social media and um, the the lack of uh, certain restrictions. Um, so um, all this is uh, coming up, and um, there also a lack of um, adequate structures to address rape, to prevent rape, and even to address rape when it occurs. And this is something we have been advocating for. We now have the Domestic Violence Act, and there may be a need to um, extend it to um, tertiary institutions and to ensure. University of Ghana has a sexual harassment policy, but we need to go beyond that because there is a creeping culture of um, impunity um, that is, 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 that is uh, occurring because we are not even able to get um, prosecution. When you even look at the conviction rates, they are very low, below 3% conviction rate. So the law is not even acting to deter people from um, um, committing rape. Most of the time, sometimes it's even settled out of court. Right. And what have you. And I'm hoping this uh, fund will, or some of some resources will be used to go into um, even acquiring um, equipment modding equipment to be right. able to detect. At this point in time, why do I need to take my underwear to court to, um, for it to be examined to ascertain whether or not I've been raped? There's equipment. You can do the DNA. You can take samples. You can do a swap. You can take samples and mm. it will be ascertained whether um, I've been raped by Kofi or Kwame. Up till now, as I speak, we don't even have basic equipment. Because if I say Kofi has raped me, they can take a swap from me and they can also take his DNA and um, his blood sample or urine or whatever, and they can ascertain whether he raped me or not. But as we speak now, the police service do not even have that um, equipment. So we need to really do um, a lot to reduce and, uh, and prevent um, rape. It's, it's really sad. And my heart goes out to the lady, and I'm hoping that um, the perpetrators will be... Um, I mean, we, 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 we cannot even begin to put ourselves in her shoes. We cannot even begin to... Imagine what trauma this would cause her. And hopefully no one else has to go through a situation like this. But uh, let me just sneak in. Now that we're talking about the gender ministry, let me just sneak in this bit. You have been there before. And some celebrated you for the great work you did. Others didn't feel you did so well. But when you look at your ministry then and what you did, and now, and what we are seeing, I mean, there's a Sarah Adrasafo uh, situation, for example. She's been away for about a year uh, now she's lost her position. The Minister for uh, water, Sanitation and Water Resources, Cecilia Abnadapa, has had to step in. Now we've, you know, substantively put forward two other people, the deputy being moved. I mean, then and now, what is the comparison? Is that ministry still strong? And, and maybe your quick reflection on Sarah Adwasafo. I'll just wrap before you give the answer to that. The Daily Guide Fitch confirms $3 billion IMF lifeline for Ghana. So instead of the $1.5 billion we we're looking for, we are now looking for twice of that, $3 billion. And uh, that is what they've confirmed officially online. So you can now go back to the gender ministry situation, and then it's a wrap. Yes. You see, the gender ministry is a people's ministry. It takes care of persons with disability. It takes care of vulnerable persons. It takes care of children. It takes care of the aged and also is in charge of social services for the whole of Ghana. As far as I'm concerned, it's the most important ministry within government because it directly takes care of the people of Ghana. And so it is very sad. It is a very sad state of affairs that there's no substantive minister, that we have a caretaker minister over a um, number of years. And this is a party. No, not, not over a number of years, just about, just, a about a year. well, just about a year. Just about a year. This is a party that said they had the men and the women, and they talked about um, uh, unqualified or NDC not having the men and the women. You have the men and the women, and you can't get one single person, one, it will make to lead, I mean, to lead a ministry, such an important quick, ministry. Quick question, would you, would you, would you fault, quick, quick, quick question, would you fault Sarah Adwasafo, and do you feel she should have been sacked a long time ago? Sarah Adwasafo was appointed by President Nana Akufuado. She was given a mandate. She's a member of parliament. 
between the president and parliament, the laws and the rules and, re and regulations are there. Ghanaians have asked for representation in her constituency. Ghanaians have asked for service from her as a minister. So I would fault President Nana Adodankwa Akufu Addo. He is the appointing authority and he has the mandate to implement, um, implement programs for that ministry. Ajua Safu, Honorable Ajua Safu is performing a duty. And so it is the backstops at Nana Adudankwa Akufuado and nobody else. I will not fault Honorable Ajua Safu. I will fault the president. He appointed her and he promised Ghanaians he was going to implement and um, uh, implement certain programs. So if there's a problem, the buck stops with Nana Adodako Akufuado. Everybody should blame him, the, he the president, and not Ajoa Safo. And to go to the ministry, leap disbursements have fallen back. Several programs are not working. It is not good enough. We all know when we don't have a leader and an arrowhead, we all know the problems. And all we are asking is that that Ministry of Gender is such a critical ministry, it shouldn't be taken through what it is being taken through. And I commend all the workers there, the chief director and all the officers who, despite the challenges, have been uh, um, working. Let's work, let's serve persons with disability, let's serve the aged, right. and let's also serve elite beneficiaries. It's been exciting connecting with you. It's been so long, and uh, thank you so much for making the time to interact with us uh, this morning. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, you have a good day too. Wish you the very best. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, the news review. That was a bit of a surprise we pulled on you this morning. But up next, we serve you sports. There's a whole lot coming up, and you can expect all of that to be delivered shortly. Do stay.